Bible words and verses, what the Bible says. Unto us a child is born. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Sign of Jonah Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Christ was buried on a Wednesday evening and rose from the dead on a Saturday evening. What about a Friday evening burial and a Sunday morning resurrection? That's 36 hours or one and a half days, but 72 hours is three 24-hour days. A Friday evening burial and a Sunday morning resurrection would be 36 hours or one and a half days, or in other words, two nights and one day. Christ was buried on a Wednesday evening and rose from the dead on a Saturday evening. That's 72 hours or three full days, or in other words, three days and three nights. 72 hours is three days and three nights. A full day has 24 hours. 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of daylight. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. God's reckoning of a 24-hour day, 12 hours of evening, darkness or night, starting at sunset, followed by 12 hours of morning, light or day or daylight, starting at sunrise. And God called the light day, 
and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. God created a seven-day week, starting with the first day, Sunday, and ending with the seventh day, Saturday, or the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Buried on a Wednesday evening and rose on a Saturday evening is correct, but to be even more precise and remembering God's reckoning of time, where a day starts in the evening at sunset. Christ was buried just before sunset as Wednesday Abib 14 was about to end and Thursday Abib 15 was about to begin. And likewise, Christ rose just before sunset as Saturday Abib 17 was about to end and Sunday Abib 18 was about to begin. Three days and three nights. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised again the third day. The Passover instituted. It's necessary to be familiar with the Passover feast in order to understand the events related to the crucifixion. The feast of unleavened bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread as I commanded thee in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. Abib became Nisan at the time of the Babylonian captivity. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast her, that is, the lot, before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. 
and ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. In the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. During Crucifixion Week, even though the Passover was the first day of unleavened bread, Wednesday Abib 14, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was Thursday Abib 15, the Feast Sabbath or the High Sabbath. In the first day, ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. The seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was Wednesday Abib 21, also a feast Sabbath. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. There were two Sabbaths. Knowing that between the burial and the resurrection there were two Sabbaths, let's take a close look at the various Bible passages with the following two words, preparation and Sabbath. The verses provided are in sequence as presented in the Bible. The two Sabbaths, Thursday and Saturday, and the two preparation days, Wednesday and Friday, a close examination of the different verses with preparation and Sabbath. Why examine the Bible verses with preparation and Sabbath? To establish which preparation and which Sabbath the verses refer to in context. In light of Jesus' sign, three days and three nights, seventy-two hours, the sign of Jonah. The chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate on Thursday Abib 15, the High Sabbath. In other words, the next day that followed the day of the preparation, Wednesday Abib 14. Now the next day that followed the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Command, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch, go your way, Make it as sure as ye can. Nisan Abib 15, Thursday, the High Sabbath. The guard at the tomb. The tombstone is to be sealed for three days. From Thursday, Nisan Abib 15, the High Sabbath, till Sunday, Nisan Abib 18. 
So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. In the end of the Sabbath, in other words, when the weekly Sabbath was over, at first light, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, which is Sunday morning of Abib 18. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulchre. The day of preparation was Wednesday, Abib 14, the Passover, and the Sabbath was Thursday, Abib 15, the High Sabbath. And now, when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, and when the Sabbath was passed, Saturday, Habib 17, the weekly Sabbath, the women had bought spices on Friday, Habib 16. Friday was the only business day on which the women could have bought the spices. Why Friday and not Wednesday to buy and prepare spices? Because no one knew that Jesus would be killed. Jesus had prophesied, but their ears were closed to this prophecy until the angels reminded the women at the tomb. The apostles also were reminded later that Jesus should have been killed and raised the third day. The women followed Jesus throughout the events that took place on Wednesday and had no time to buy spices and did not even know that Jesus would die. If the women had spices on Wednesday, they would have used them on Wednesday at the tomb. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had bought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. The preparation day was Wednesday, Abib 14, and the Sabbath was Thursday, Abib 15, the High Sabbath. Nisan, Abib 14, was a Wednesday. Jesus was buried near the end of Wednesday, Abib 14, the Passover, just before sunset, which was the preparation day for the High Sabbath, Thursday, Abib 15, the feast or annual Sabbath, not the weekly Sabbath. And that day was the preparation, and the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulchre, and how his body was laid. Nisan Abib 14 was a Wednesday. The women left the sepulchre after Jesus was laid in the tomb. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Nisan Abib 15 was a Thursday, the High Sabbath, the Feast Sabbath, not the Weekly Sabbath. Nisan Abib 16 was a Friday. The women bought and prepared spices on Friday, the first business day in which to buy the spices, and rested on Nisan Abib 17, a Saturday, the weekly Sabbath. One more time. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments, and rested the Sabbath day 
according to the commandment. According to what commandment? This commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In other words, the women rested on the high Sabbath, Thursday, bought and prepared the spices on Friday, and the women rested on the weekly Sabbath, Abib 17. Friday, Abib 16. The women bought and prepared the spices on Friday, the only day on which work was allowed, and rested on the weekly Sabbath, Saturday, Abib 17. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. Wednesday, Abib 14, was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour was about six in the morning. In this case, it's Roman time, not God's reckoning of time. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. The preparation was Wednesday, Abib 14, the Passover. And the Sabbath day was the High Sabbath, Thursday, Abib 15. Nisan Abib 14, Wednesday. Later that day, approaching the evening of Abib 15, the Passover is the preparation day for the High Sabbath, Abib 15, an annual or feast Sabbath, not the weekly Sabbath. The Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the bodies should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was an high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. The preparation day was Wednesday, Abib 14, the Passover. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. Question. What is the purpose of the crucifixion of Christ? Answer. Christ died on the cross so that his elect, the children of God, have eternal life and fellowship with God. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. We have not our own faith, only the faith of Jesus Christ is acceptable to God. We have the faith of Jesus Christ. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. 
For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Jesus is the Christ. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And we know that the Son of God is come, and hath given us an understanding, that we may know him that is true, and we are in him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. There is only one true gospel of Jesus Christ, but beware of false gospels which preach a different Christ and deny the power of the Deity, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Also beware of false gospels which preach a different Mary instead of the virtuous Mary of the Bible. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will be hid to unbelievers. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. God has shined in the hearts of believers. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We are told to be equally yoked. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? We are to rightly divide the word of truth, in other words, to discern the truth of the Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Making the word of God of none effect through your tradition which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Remember, the words of the Lord are pure words. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Be not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. 
For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. It's important to verify the scriptures for yourself. Be like the Bereans. Let God be your light. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. God promised to preserve his word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What do you mean by heaven and earth shall pass away? And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Here's the mystery of godliness. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come.